Intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating have become one of the hottest topics lately for health and weight loss. And we've seen lots of studies showing that it can help with weight loss, it can help with metabolic health, and it can even help with fatty liver, blood sugar, blood pressure, but in the right circumstance, because not all studies are universally positive. But one question that maybe hasn't been answered so well in the scientific literature, is it a reasonable thing for people to do who are busy people, who are working, who have busy lives? Can we expect them to be able to comply with intermittent fasting? Is it easy? Is it too much of a challenge? Is maybe that's why it doesn't work so well in every trial? Well, now we have a new study that's looked at it, which gives us some insight that yes, it probably is a reasonable thing to ask, at least in the 15 to 16 hour range for most people, even busy working people. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And I want to talk about this study because I do think it's interesting that it seems like a real simple question. Is it viable? Is it a real thing that we can use and ask people to do that they're going to comply with? We have lots of studies asking the questions of how does it help people from a health standpoint, but not the simple question of can they actually do it? And that's why even though it's such a simple study, I thought it was interesting and worth pointing out. It was a study published in the journal, German Medical Science. What the researchers did was they took 63 participants, average age 47, and they all had to be university employees. They were in different parts of the university, but the point is they were full-time employees, they had, they had busy jobs, and they were asked to perform time-restricted eating. And it was pretty simple. They were asked to fast 15 to 16 hours per day, so to keep their eating window within eight to nine hours per day. And that's it. Didn't tell them when the eating window had been, didn't, didn't tell them what they should be eating, just very simple intervention. And they wanted to assess the quality of life and the compliance with the fasting and weight and waist circumference and a couple other measures as secondary endpoints. But the main endpoint was, how are they able to comply? This was a three-month study, and of interest, they did lose weight. It was modest weight loss on average. They lost 1.3 kilograms with 1.7 centimeters off their waist circumference. Uh, but one thing that was really interesting to me was that the quality of life increased. So you might think with time-restricted eating, now oh, you're gonna be hungry, you're gonna be missing food, your quality of life might decrease, but the quality of life increased on their subjective scale, which I thought was pretty interesting and very encouraging for this as a, as a useful intervention. Overall compliance was good at 72%. So 72% uh, were able to achieve the fasting goal of 15 to 16 hours. And interestingly, if you look at the graph of the number of participants who reached the target, quite a few had were 100% compliant or 90% compliant, but the majority uh, centers around the 70 to 80% range. And the mean fasting time, again, the majority center around the 15 to 16 hour range with some going out to 18 and some down to 14. So one take home for me suggests that maybe that you know 15 to 16 hour range is the best for compliance for busy people. It's hard to say whether 18 is better than 16, better than 14. There's some conflicting data with that. But based on this study, you might say if you're working with somebody who's really uh, you know, who's a busy uh, working person, or if that describes you and you're looking to do time-restricted eating, maybe that 15, 16 hour window is best for compliance. Now, the other data, the weight loss, the waist circumference changes, those were pretty modest. 1.3 kilogram weight loss over three months with 1.7 loss of waist circumference. But as with a lot of studies, there there was a big, pretty big range. People, Some people lost up to 8.9 kilograms and 13 centimeters off their waist. Uh, so there are definitely some people who respond better than others. And I think it'd be really interesting to learn why that is. And they also monitored for side effects. And the side effects were also mostly modest and mostly in the very beginning uh, that then improved over time. Overall, not an earth shattering study, but one that definitely shows in the 15 to 16 hour range, uh, time restricted eating is completely doable and has some modest benefits um, it'd be more interesting to see, you know, to tease out why people responded better than others. You know, my guess is when you don't give any other guidance, when you don't tell them when to eat or what to eat or how much to eat, you just say eat in a window, that's only part of the equation. The other part of the equation 
um, I think is making sure they realize that it doesn't give you license to eat more during your eating window. The idea is a sustainable caloric reduction, not to make up the calories during that eating window and to still focus on good foods, right? Some people are going to be hungrier and want to binge more and maybe eat some carby, more uh, high carb, high fat combined uh, processed foods to kind of hit that itch a little bit more if they're hungry. So they need advice not to do that and guidance not to do that. So eating in a way that's maybe a low carb, higher protein, higher fat kind of diet um, may help with that satiety even better. That's why I think that's a great combination with intermittent fasting and time restricted eating. But I think this study, like an earlier study that we covered uh, published by Dr. Ethan Weiss and his colleagues at UCSF, show that you kind of need more intervention than simply telling people when to eat. That could be a good start, but adding more only adds more benefit. Now, while we're talking about time-restricted eating, it might be worth talking about a second study published in Circulation Research. Now, this study, the headlines say that fasting reduces blood pressure by changes in the gut microbiome. Now, anytime there's a gut microbiome study, I'm a little hesitant. I'm a little skeptical. And this was in rats, so I'm even more skeptical because we know time-restricted eating can reduce blood pressure. Now, I figured it's from reducing insulin, reducing weight, being the two main factors. With this study saying it can be because of changes in the gut microbiome, it was actually fairly interesting. I mean, they took fasting rats and rats fed every day. They took their gut microbiome and transplanted it into rats that didn't have a gut microbiome. And those who were received the gut microbiome from the fasting rats had lower blood pressure than those who received the microbiome from the eating rats, that rats who ate every day, which is a little crazy to me. Like it, it doesn't quite make sense. So I don't know what to make of this study, but I thought it was interesting nonetheless to say, maybe there are things we don't understand yet about fasting that we're gonna continue to learn more about. Personally, I still am gonna focus on the weight loss, the metabolic health, the insulin resistance. I think that's got the biggest component more so than the microbiome. Uh, but based on the study, it might be interesting to see what comes next. All right, so that was a brief tour of these two uh, intermittent fasting studies. Hopefully this helps you uh, and maybe helps you understand how you can integrate intermittent fasting into your life for benefits and how maybe it's more than just the timing of when you eat, but still focusing on what you eat, high quality foods, and making sure intermittent fasting is a long-term sustainable form of healthy caloric reduction and not just a, an excuse to eat more while you're eating. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. If this was helpful, please hit the the thumbs up, like, and subscribe button down below. And we'll see you next time here on DD News on YouTube.